let's just assume that one troy ounce of silver does go up to a hundred dollars will you trade it in will you sell your silver for a hundred dollars My friends, welcome to another episode of Economic Friend. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to subscribe. And remember, it's never too early to go ahead and like this video. Here I do have a generic round of silver. This is a one troy ounce of silver. How much does it cost today, right now at the time of this video? And this is just gonna be an average, and I'm just gonna round the numbers down. But here, this one troy ounce here in the United States of America, right now you're looking at paying about $30 to get this right now. So you're looking at paying $30 for one troy ounce. Now this includes the spot price, this also includes the premium markup. So you bring $30 to a coin shop, they give you this, they take their money, and now you've got this nice piece of silver. Beautiful, nice troy ounce of silver. Now let's say next day you realize, man, I made a mistake. Gosh darn, I forgot there was a bill that I have to pay. But the person I gotta pay the bill to, they, they, they're not gonna take this silver coin, so I, I've gotta get my money back. So you go back to the local coin shop, knock, 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 and the local coin shop says, hey, what do you want? I said, hey, I need my $30 back. I made a mistake, I shouldn't have purchased this. And the local coin shop says, oh, okay, well, uh, here you go and then you say well wait a minute why are you only giving me 20 back i paid 30 yesterday and then the local coin shop uh, they'll say well you know that that's what we sold it for we had our markup we had our premium on it but we're willing to give you 20 dollars back for that coin oh man you know then they give the coin back to the coin shop and the local coin shop is <laughs> man that was a lesson learned you know i i brought in 30 dollars yesterday and i only got 20 back i mean what a loss now i know these numbers i know these dollar figures they kind of vary and it may not be quite as this bad but it, it's pretty darn close you, you guys get the idea you guys get the big picture so then uh you, you know some money comes back and you've got an opportunity to go ahead and buy some more silver back so you come back another day with another thirty dollars and you say hey i want that i would like to get another troy ounce of silver please and the coin shop says okay here you go and they take and then they take their money and then you're, you're back to this and you've got your silver coin. You got your uh, one ounce, one troy ounce of uh, 999 fine silver. Pretty cool. You got your money back. You learned your lesson. Now, this time you bought it and you you knew that you were not going to need that money back because you, you really sat down and you went over your bills. You went over your budget. You knew that this time when you bought this, you were not going to have to turn around and resell it because you don't want to lose on that premium again. So now you're enjoying this beautiful coin. You're admiring it. You keep it on your table. Maybe you show it to some family members. I mean, you're pretty proud of this, this beautiful troy ounce of 999 fine silver now some time goes by maybe a month maybe two months maybe two years who knows it doesn't matter it's all irrelevant on how much time but time goes by and you find out that this is now worth a hundred dollars you can sell this for a hundred dollars they want the silver so bad so now they're, they're throwing it at you they're saying hey man i'll give you a hundred dollars for this troy ounce now you're gonna sit there and think Gee, man, what a what a great profit! You know, I bought this thing for thirty dollars, and today I can sell it for a hundred dollars. I mean, that's that's a good profit. That's over two hundred percent profit on earnings. I mean, that's pretty good. That is a really good return. All right, now there's a couple different things that can happen here. Okay, now let's say you go ahead, you take the hundred dollars. They, you know, they take your silver coin. And you're like, oh man, all right, you know, I've got a hundred dollars here. This was this was a that was a pretty easy good exit strategy. Now I've got my hundred dollars and now I'm gonna go and spend it and or maybe I'll invest it in something else. Maybe I'll buy some crypto or maybe I'll buy a stock with it. I don't know. I I've got a hundred dollars. I made some good profit. So let's just say you spend it uh, however you choose to spend it, the money's gone. And out of that $100, now you're just down to $6. So you've got $6 left, right? $6 left. And then let's say everything just crashes. The markets crash. The global economy has crashed. Everything has crashed. Stocks are worthless. Cryptocurrencies are worthless. This, this becomes worthless. What's Now you're going to be like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I've lost all my silver. I don't have any silver. I sold it. Now this is all hypothetical thinking and, and I am having a little fun with this. Okay, now let's say you didn't sell that silver coin and you you just kept it right you 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 said no to the you know the hundred dollar offer came in you said no no i don't want that i'm just gonna keep and hold on to my my silver coin i have more faith in this uh silver coin right here this uh silver bullion this 
this generic round. I'm this one troy ounce of 99 fine silver. I just have more confidence in this. I, I turned down the offer for $100 and I'm going to keep and hold on to this. Now, let's say the markets didn't crash and everything is just going hunky dory. Everything is just going just as fine as it possibly could. Good times. Silver comes back down in value. And now all of a sudden it's only worth, uh, say, you know, $50 or maybe we'll, we'll just say $20. Say it's only worth $20. Now you might sit there and think, okay, gee whiz, now I wish I took that $100. You know, man, this was, I could have sold this for $100 just the other day. Now it's only worth $20. Now, what was I thinking? So some more time goes by and then uh, you find out that the value, the price of silver has gone up even more again, more than when it was just $100. Think Things have changed. Now, someone comes up to you and he's, they say, hey, I'll give you $100,000 for this silver coin. And let's pretend you say, okay, my gosh, wow, $100,000. Holy cow, that's a lot of money. Yes, you take, please take my silver coin. Uh, I've got my $100,000 here now. You know, things are starting to look a little like Zimbabwe here. So you got your $100,000, right? Well, you, you turn around and you find out, man, hyperinflation has made everything just out of control. This just doesn't buy me what I thought it was going to buy me. And so on and so on. So that's the question I pose here. And I, I only ask the, these questions because I want you guys to all think. I want you guys to be able to plan, be strategic. What are you going to do when the one troy ounce of silver goes up to $100, $200, $500, What are you going to do? Now, I know a lot of you might say, well, economic friend, that's really hard to answer now. I, it, you know, circumstances, you know, what, whatever's going on at the time. But here's my answer. Here's my short, simple answer. And we all have different reasons why we stack. If somebody has the goal to, to do this, to turn this into a profit and exchange it, you know, they call it an exit strategy, and then they want to move those investments uh, elsewhere, maybe into real estate or stocks or, or maybe even gold or whatever. Some of us may say, you know what, I'm, I'm never going to let this go. I, I'm going to hold on to this until I am in need of it, or I want to pass it on to my children. My children are going to need this more than I will. You know, this is a hedge against inflation. This is a preservation of wealth. You know, someone can offer me $500,000 for it, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to trade it in. What if it's a trick? I mean, think about this. But but what if, what if the game of life, they, they gave this to you only that they knew beforehand that when they gave this to you, it was going to turn around and be worthless the next day, just so that they can take this away from you, take this out of your hands. Now, if you think that sounds pretty far-fetched and you don't think that a government or anybody would do that, you might want to think again. They take this away from you. You're left with nothing but a piece, look at that, nothing but a piece of paper, just a promissory note, completely worthless of no value everything comes crashing down and now you have no more silver in your possession or same for gold because for a short moment you believed the big lie that this was going to be better for you and i'm not saying it's going to happen i'm not saying it will but my point is what i am saying is my friends, we have to think about these kinds of things. And there's no need to panic. We have plenty of time to, to get our hands on some silver and, and some gold. But I do think we need to start planning and start thinking about what exactly does this mean to you? Think about it. Hold it. Think about it. What does it mean to you? What's it worth to you? I've shared many times in previous videos that I don't care about the spot price. Sure, it would be nice if premiums would come back down, but I don't get so hung up on the price. You know, a lot of us, you know, we, we watch the ticker all day long and into the evening, into the late night, and we see the price of silver and gold going up and down. It just creates anxiety. It's, it's just all a hesitation and a distraction to keep you from, from getting your hands on this stuff, in my opinion, for a lot of us. Me, I budget for this stuff. I, I, I buy it regularly. I get it what I can. I get what I can when I can. But I always make sure that whatever I'm buying, I make sure that I can do without the money, the US dollar without needing it back the next day or week, months, whenever, just so I can pay some bills. Now, of course, emergencies happen. You know, this stuff happens. You can't avoid a crisis. You can't avoid. But ideally, we, we, we don't want to be in a situation where we're having to turn this back in and lose our money through the premiums. Me, I, I think about this stuff almost every day. You know, I, I can't advise you guys 
guys, I can't give you financial advice. I can't give you legal advice. I have no crystal ball. So I cannot tell you what's going to happen. Nobody can. Sure, it's fun to make predictions. It's, it's fun to take a stab or a guess at what's going to happen. But the truth and the reality is, is that we, we have no control over the situation. You know, I've been expecting this crash for, for a very long time, over a decade. But yet they keep finding ways to kick the problems, kick the can down the road. They keep putting band-aids on everything. And sometimes it makes us feel like that we're, we're living in the game of uh, monopoly or we're living in the game of, of life with all this play money. If you guys really think about it, this money that we have, this money, this currency that we use here in the United States, yes, it's backed by the U.S. government. We've got military strength and everything else. So this this is backed by a you know, promissory note. So one would argue and say, well, this is real. This is play money. But whose game are we in? Are we in the game of monopoly? Are we in the game of life? Are we in the game of the Federal Reserve? Either way, someone other than yourself is making the rules. Not you. You and I are not making the rules. We we don't make the rules of this game. Others make the rules to this game. And you know what? They keep printing this and printing this. It might as be the same as if we're in the game of Monopoly or the game of life. But my friends, this here, silver and gold. So I don't have any gold here in front of me right now. This here is real money. God's money. It holds value today. It will always hold value. And even though in recent years, this has not been the greatest hedge against inflation, but history has proven that this is a good hedge against inflation. This is a good preservation of wealth. So what do you guys think? Please leave a comment below. Share with us what you think, what your thoughts are on this topic. Heck, if you want to share your strategy with the, the rest of us, that would be awesome. There's, you know, this here is a community. We're all in a community here. We're all neighbors. We're all friends. We're all family. Sure, there's always going to be a troll coming in and uh, and correct us or make fun or, or mock what we talk about on here. And that's just what keeps life interesting, right? If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please take a second and just go ahead and subscribe. You don't want to miss what's coming up. And if you haven't yet given this video a like, please be sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.